Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is November the 27th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, we're continuing our study through the book of Hebrews, and today we are in chapter 12. Now, we're going to spend a few moments in the first three verses, and I want us to look at these very closely. So if you have your Bibles, open to Hebrews chapter 12, and let's begin at verse 1. Wherefore, seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, keep in mind, we can't begin chapter 12 without remembering chapter 11. We have to keep things in context. And so the writer of Hebrews is saying, based upon everything that we have discussed in Hebrews chapter 11, or my previous statements, because remembering at that time there were no chapters, there were no verses. This was one lengthy letter. And so he says, based upon what I've just said about Enoch, about Adam, about Abel, about Noah, about Abraham, about David and Samuel and the prophets and all these other great men of faith, remembering that we are surrounded by them, that their witness, that their testimony has paved the way for us as the followers of God, let us lay aside every weight as they did, and the sin which so easily besets us. Now Moses, being one of these witnesses, again in chapter 11, verse 25, it says, Moses choose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In other words, Moses laid aside every weight. If you're going to go on a long journey, a long hike, you're going to go as light as possible so you can endure throughout the entire hike. And so you're only going to take the most needed things because anything else is going to weigh you down and make your experience very unpleasant. And so if we want our journeys to be pleasant with the Lord on our way to the kingdom, we must lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Now, the sin it's speaking of here is that of taking the easy way out, giving in to our own will, our own desire, and that's always the easiest because it requires no discipline whatsoever. We say what we want, when we want, how we want. We speak our minds regardless of the consequences to the person that's hearing. We treat others disrespectfully as long as it makes us feel good, as long as it makes us feel empowered. We live each and every day satisfying the desires of our flesh with no thought about the consequences of eternal judgment. And of course, these things are much easier to do than to live a life of discipline, a life of holiness. Because in a life of discipline, we restrain ourselves, we imprison ourselves, we crucify our flesh, and we fight and battle to walk in the Spirit. And that requires much more effort. So the writer says, because we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, in other words, if they can do it, you can do it, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Do you remember when Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but only one receives the prize? So you run that you may be the one that receives the prize. And that's what the writer here in Hebrews is telling us whom I believe to be Paul. And he says, we're going to run this race that has been set before us. And as we run, we are going to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, again, it was Paul in Philippians chapter one, verse six, that said, being confident of this very thing, that he, Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. He who has begun a good work is the author of your faith. And he who will perform it until the day of his return is the finisher of your faith. 
And so what, that's what the writer says here. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the one who began our journey and the finisher of our faith, the one who is going to end our journey, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, the suffering that came with the cross, he counted it joy because he knew that this was the means to the redemption of many. He knew that all those who had been plagued, who had been shackled and burdened, and one could even say tortured by sin, this would be the means of their deliverance. And because of this deliverance, they would never again be the same. They would be cleansed. They would be set free. And this would bring much joy to Jesus. So he endured the hardship, the suffering, the pain, the agony, the humiliation of the cross on behalf of all those who would enter in through the cross. It's like that of a mother. Because she loves her child so much, she's willing to endure all the pain, all the hardship, all the suffering that comes along with the pregnancy and giving of birth. For that one moment where she can hold that baby in her arms, it's all worth it at that point. And there's coming a day when we are going to meet Jesus face to face and he will hold us in his arms and it will all be worth it. And now that he has endured the cross, he's paid the final penalty. He has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The right hand is the place of authority, the place of power. And yet it wasn't Jesus who chose to sit on the right hand. But it was the Father, as we're told in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. It was the Father who has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that he, Jesus, is Lord to the glory of the Father. And so Jesus is our great and mighty God, that we surrender to because of his authority, because of his position in the kingdom, and because of this in verse 3, as we consider Jesus, his life on this earth, the way he was tried, the way that he died, we are to consider him who himself suffered great contradiction at the hand of sinners, and we too should be willing to pay the same price and not be surprised when these persecutions come. Because just as darkness tried to snuff out the light and the truth then, so it does still today. That's why we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Again, in chapter 4, verse 5, watch, be alert, be aware in all things, endure afflictions. And in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19, this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, just as Jesus suffered wrongly, we're to consider him and realize that things will be no different for us. And it's never been any different for the true people of God who are willing to stand in the face of opposition to stand for the Lord not to take the coward's way out, but to stand for the truth and to speak the truth when necessary. And that's what we were told in chapter 11, verse 36. It says, these men who took this position for the Lord had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted. They were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Why? Because they could not live among the common people. They were ostracized. People didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to be reminded of the truth each and every day. So they threw them out of the city, and these men lived in caves. And yet, because of the stand that they took, the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And yet, though despised by men, they have obtained a good report through faith. Oh, friends, may the same be said of us. 
that the lives we live, the choices we make, are the admiration of the kingdom. The angels look upon us in wonder and awe that we truly bring glory to the Father, to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, and that all heaven applauds Him because of the sacrifices that we make on His behalf. Just as we look back at the person of Job, who showed such great faith and fortitude in times of such severe suffering, may others look upon us with great admiration because of the love and the allegiance that we have in the way that we live our lives unto our Lord Jesus. And so as the author of Hebrew tells us, let us lay aside every weight, every sin, which so easily besets us, which so easily knocks us off course. And let us continue on the straight and narrow. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. It's not a sprint Let us run with patience, relying upon the hand of the Lord in our lives each and every day, knowing that he who has begun a good work in us will complete it at the day, at the return of the Lord Jesus. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us this morning. I pray that your heart has been touched. I pray that your life is being changed. I pray that your soul is being blessed. And I pray that you are being challenged. As you sit in the presence of the Almighty through each of these videos and you would learn what it is he would have you to know through his living and powerful word. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.